In this video, we're going to do the manual onboarding of VEdge 42, which is the last device that we have in our topology. Now, subsequent to that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove all of these configurations. We're going to look at another tool that we can use to onboard devices, but we're going to do that in the next section. So right now, what we want to do is we want to step back and take a look at what we have on hand, and that is going to correspond to the devices that are part of our SD-WAN infrastructure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as admin. Continue. We'll go ahead and use the password. Ice is cool. I want to take a look at the configuration. We see that we have our seven WAN Edge devices that are available. And the next step is going to handle the onboarding of this device right here. So if I log into it, we'll find that it has no configuration on it whatsoever. So we're going to do admin, admin. It'll force us to change the password. Ice is cool. Ice is cool. We see now that we're in the console. So let's go ahead and begin the basic configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say config terminal. We will go to the system where we're going to apply the five major pieces of information that we need to onboard this device. First, I'm going to give it a unique host name. So we're going to say host dash name, and it will be sdgeeksve42. I need to give it a system IP address, which will be 10.255.104.42. We will implement a site ID, which is going to be site 104. We will then provide the identity of the vbond. The vbond is going to be located at vbond.sd-geeks.local. And my organizational name is going to end up being master class. Now, as an example, if you didn't want to use the quotations here, understand that you could hit enter and it's going to ask you for the organizational name. I would say master class. And then what that will do is it will actually take the organizational name without requiring the use of those quotation marks. So at this junk, what, juncture, what I'm going to do now is I am going to say commit. So I have my five pieces of information, host name, system IP, site ID, vbond identity, organizational name. So let's go ahead and do a commit on this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do show run system. And let's just see how it put everything in. Notice it inserted those quotation marks for me. Just keep in mind that's only necessary because there's a space in the name. Next, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and take a look at the configuration of VPN0. So I'm going to go to VPN0. And under VPN0, I'm going to go ahead and just configure the Gigabit Ethernet 00, 0 interface. So I'm going to say, uh, first of all, let's go ahead and do our IP route. We're going to send our default route, which is going to be 0, .0, .0, 0, 0. That is going to get sent to 10 .1, since that should be the IP address on Business Internet. So we'll say 10 .1. Dot 42.1. Dot That's going to be my gateway of last resort. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and configure my DNS, which is going to be 183.1.1.1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the interface of Gigabit Ethernet 00. We're going to give it an IP address. That IP address is going to be 10.104.42.2 slash 30. I'm going to go to tunnel interface. I'm going to do encapsulation IP, actually we'll say IPsec, and I'm going to leave the color as is because I don't think we've amended the color in any other device. So with that being said, I'm going to say allow services all, and I'm going to say no shut, and then we'll say commit and quit. Now let's go ahead and see what we've got going on here by executing a show IP route command because I want to see what's in the routing table, and what we'll find here is, is that in VPN0, I have no mention of a default route. Now, I entered one. So again, show run VPN0. We'll see here that I configured a default route. So what we need to find out is, is that IP address reachable? So I'm going to say ping 10.104.42.1. And what we're going to find, it is not reachable. Now, this is a direct result of the fact that it's not configured on business internet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go into Business Internet. We're going to navigate 
to show run interface ethernet two slash three and we can see there's no config so let's go ahead and fix that we're going to go to config t interface ethernet two slash three ip address will be 10 dot 104.42.1255255255252 we will do ip nat inside and we will then say that we want to no shut this interface and i'm going to go ahead and write this so those configurations should stay in place and now we can see that we have successful pings so let's go back to the vedge 42 and show ip route and let's see if we see a static route now which we do so now all I want to do is test reachability to my devices. So I'm going to say ping 10, 10, 1, 11, which is the internal IP address of my vManage. That works. Next thing I'm going to do is ping vbond.sd-geeks.local. And let's see if we have resolution, which we do. And we can see that it is going to 201. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to say ping the vSmart, which is going to be 10, 10, 1, 1, 0, 1. That'll be vSmart 1. That's the only one I'm going to worry about. I'm, not going to, I'm just going to assume that everything else is working because it has been thus far. So now what we want to do is we want to be able to onboard this device. And in order to onboard this device, I need to copy and paste some configuration in. Now, you're going to note that different than every other deployment that I've ever done in any of the previous classes that I've taught, I've always transferred and created something called the root CA PIM file. Now, because we're using Cisco to authorize devices, that is now not going to be necessary. Right now, what will end up happening is, is the vManage is going to handle the signature and the authentication of these devices via the vBond. So that's why it was very, very important that vEdge 42 have the capability of being able to communicate to the vBond and all of the controllers, so the vBond being our orchestrator. So now, at this point, what I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and open one of my vBonds, and I want to, again, get a listing of the config vbond2 doesn't seem to be working let's try vbond1 i may have to log back log out and log back in so as long as i can get into one of these for some reason let's do a control c ah, i know why because it was in temp log all right so but i only need one so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna log into the vbond admin ice is cool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say show orchestrator, because remember, the vBond is an orchestrator, so orchestrator is the keyword. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say show me valid the edges. And rather than look at it in this format, I am going to go ahead and say do that in a tabular format. And what we'll find here is we have the devices. Notice this resource right here, 7AC29. 7AC29 has an actual serial number. It does not have a token. All of the other UUIDs identifying my V edges all have chassis numbers and tokens, OTPs. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to use this one right here, 7 Delta Delta. So 7 Delta Delta is going to end up being the UUID that I'm going to use for V edge 42. So what we need to do is we need to start this process. So from this device, I'm going to do the request, the Edge Cloud, activate chassis number. And I'm going to take this chassis number right here and insert it. I'm going to go ahead and say the token that I opt to use is going to end up being this guy right here. And simply press Enter. Now, as a result of this, this device should immediately start trying to communicate to the vBond that we identified. And what I would like to do real quick is let's see if we can catch this. It's probably too late, but I'm going to go ahead and start a packet capture for 2 slash 3. Let's see how this goes. Uh, we're already communicating to the vManage. We can see 10, 10, 1, 11. So let's go ahead and we can see everything that is coming up right now. We see all kinds of DTLS tunnels. We'll say DTLS. And we see 
that these tunnels are up and operational and we can see that we are exchanging information. So let's slide back over here. We can see as an example from that's to the source from the VBond to this device, 10.10.1.11 uh, .10 is the vManage. And then ultimately what we should see here is a number of connections that are going to be going down towards our VBond. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of this, 10.10.1.101, there it was. So 10.10.1.101 showed up, there it is, 10.10.1.01, that is vSmart1. And obviously, we're going to form a peering relationship with more of these. So let's go ahead and say, show OMP peers and see if we have a peering relationship. And we should have a peer with two of our vSmarts if we have successfully onboarded our device. And we can see, plain as day, we have a peering to 101 and we have a, a peering to 102. So as an example, you know, this is demonstrating beyond a shadow of a doubt that this device has actually been onboarded. The last check is going to end up being looking in, at the resource, and what we should see is this should jump up to eight devices. You can notice we have eight reachable devices in our configuration. Very quickly, I'm going to go to monitor. I want to go to devices, and I'm going to pull out SDG VEdge 42, and I want to look at the control plane connections. Now, bear in mind, we only have the one transport, but we should see that we have connections through that transport to 2V smarts and to 1V manage. So we see here the 2V smarts and the 1V manage. So this handles the idea of supporting the concept of doing a manual deployment of a V edge device that does not require me to create a certificate nor move those certificates around which is one of the reasons that I made the decision to do the initial deployment of the controllers and the orchestrator the way that I did, allowing Cisco to sign those certificates. Using the tar -GZ file that I provided you in the one of the previous videos in this section of building your own home lab, you could instantiate all of my configurations and you now have the capability of being able to onboard devices in a more efficient and honestly, just simply an easier fashion. So with this being said, I'm hoping that you guys found this particular video helpful. And at this point, everyone should have all eight of their devices, the two V edges and the four AKVs. We should have all of those devices onboarded and operational, and your screen should look like what I illustrated just before I transitioned to the outro for this video. So again, I'm hoping this was helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video.